earlier today, um, Sarah Silverman tweeted out, be Ted Lasso, um, which is yet another indication. Someone else has watched the show and I, I just, this is one of those shows when I tell my friends to watch it, I know that. And yes, that's a very sweet thing to tweet out, but, and, and I hope this doesn't sound too cheesy, in these last few months, there have been moments when I'm like, wait a minute, what would Ted Lasso do? How can I be Ted Lasso in this situation? In this situation where I'm either down on myself or I'm angry at someone else. I know that's a very, I'm putting way too much weight on this on this very funny, very heartfelt show, but um, it's also a design for living. I'm sorry, guys, you actually did a design for living. I'm a Verizon engineer. We built our 5G nationwide so millions of people could do what they love in Verizon 5G quality. And in parts of many cities, we have ultra wideband, the fastest 5G in the world. This is 5G built right, only from Verizon. Welcome everyone to Paley Fest. Uh, we are so happy to be talking to the amazing cast and creators of Ted Lasso. We want to thank our sponsor, City, uh, and any City card holders that are watching, and also uh, festival sponsor, Verizon. Thank you guys so much for tuning in uh, and watching this discussion with my favorite show on TV, my mm -hmm. absolute favorite show on TV, Ted Lasso. And who do we have with us? Well, uh, we have uh, executive producer and uh, co-creator Bill Lawrence is here. Hi, Bill. We have exec producer, co-creator, and Ted Lasso himself, <laughs> Mr. Jason Sudeikis, is here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we oh, you froze. Jason? Okay. Right. Um, Zoom bits. Zoom bits. Zoom bits. Come on. <laughs> we have uh, exec Ooh. producer and coach Beard, Mr. Brendan Hunt, is here. Yes, Brendan Hunt. Um, also, we have the spectacular Hannah Waddingham is here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no spit take? <laughs> also, <laughs> um, also. I hope uh, this is the whole thing. It's just exactly, like, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks for like, tuning in. All right, we met them all. Bye. It's like the current also, opening titles of SNL. They have 40 people oh, in the cast right now. So just, everyone yeah. kind of turns and finds the camera like, <laughs> um, uh, we also have the adorable Jeremy Swift. Uh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> it's good. The, Always slightly in a different room. The hilarious and tormented <laughs> Bill Dunster. <laughs> yeah, what the? The equally hilarious and tormented Mr. Brent Goldstein. Oh, <laughs> Uh, um, the wonderful Nick Mohammed in his best baseball uh, cap. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. of course, Formal. the fantastic Juno Temple. No. We'll do a hair flip, <laughs> Juno. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, guys, this has been, I want to just, I want to pull this up to get this right. This has been an insane and extraordinary week for this show. Um, just this week alone, uh, three Critics' Choice Award nominations, Best Comedy, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress for Hannah. They've you've already won the AFI Television Program of the Year. Two Golden Globe nominations, three Writers Guild uh, nominations, uh, two SAG Award nominations, uh, and, uh, and he asked me not to talk about this, but it's amazing, Brendan Hunt won a popcorn shrimp eating contest against Glenn Close. So, <laughs> what? Stuff I was gonna tell you guys I'm sad. I <laughs> lost, I put dead on Glenn. I, I thought Glenn was gonna win. I totally lost. He it was Plays a, dirty. Yeah. Uh, it was rough. My shrimp so, was spicier really cool. than it had to be. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we're so happy that the cast has been filming all day. They're literally fresh off the set talking to us. So thank you guys so, so much. We've already gotten into 
season two. Uh, but let me go back and talk about season one. This is one of those shows that I get so excited because I get to tell people to go watch it and I know how happy and excited they're going to be. I was on a Zoom with Brad Bird last night, the uh, director of Ratatouille, and he was like, I am so head over heels about this show. And I love the fact that they start it off in the pilot, it is a very like, oh, it's a fish out of water. He's coaching soccer. Okay, I guess I know what this show is. And then as you go along, it is not what you think it is. And the show itself illustrates what the show's about, which is don't judge things by their covers. There's all these amazing hidden depths uh, in this program. So I wanted to talk to, especially uh, to Jason and Bill about, did you map it out that way? Were you like, you, how, you obviously had an idea about where all these characters' stories were going to go, but like, what was that process like of putting it together? Jason, you want Might to blow you? And <laughs> 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 uh, also, this is a question for uh, Brendan and then uh, 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 Brent as well. The, look, I'll tell you this: is that the uh, I was when when Jason pitched this show to me because he already had the character and already had this thing in his head. Um, I was the audience because, you know, what was really fun about it was my initial reaction, having seen those initial sketches, you know, and uh, commercials for the Premier League was, it was really funny, but it was, you know, kind of a, a one joke premise and really well executed kind of SNL sketch version of it. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't immediately see how that was a TV show. And Jason knew from the start, and I hope that's why he wanted to work with me, that he wanted to give kind of surprise and sneaky emotional depth to all these characters, have everybody have their own journey mm -hmm. and kind of surprise people with that pathos. And so what might be a negative, <clears throat> you know, which is, oh, this is kind of already exists in the ethos, became a positive because uh, uh, we were all, I think, aware going in, because we even witnessed it, remember Jason, in the pitching process, that people had already decided what this was based yep. on you know, what the early kind of commercial things were. Uh, so yeah, he knew from the yeah. start, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really uh, appreciate uh, like micro arcs. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the, you know, one of the greatest shows of all time is The British Office. And the way you care so much about David Brent telling Finchie to fuck off after 14 episodes, you know, you know uh, is because you get to know him. And so we've all had that friend that's going through something, you know, a guy or a gal, and you know that they're like, you know, heartbroken or, or nervous about a job. And they're sitting at a bar and they have their phone next to them, you know, face up and, and you can go a whole summer with them. And you know, when they refuse the call of someone that it says, do not answer, and they actually don't answer how big of a deal that is. But the only re way you know that and reason you know that is because you've you've cared about them, you've empathized with them, you've got to see all the different sides of them, you got to see their anger and their frustration and their longing and their, and, and their lusting after. And, and, and so that micro journey of just hitting, you know, you know, end or, 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 you know, refuse call or send a voicemail is a giant journey, even though it's a small, you know, you're just, you know, pressing a, a you know, piece of glass. It's like, it, it's, yeah. it's a, uh, it's a revolution within someone. So I, I think all of us have the, have that within us many times over. And, and that's one of the things that we, we try to do with the show. Yeah. Um, so it's, but how do you, how do you wrestle with the fact that you have such an embarrassment of riches in terms of not only the characters that you've created, but the actors that you have playing them? Like Hannah Waddingham could easily spin off into her own show and, and you would just be, that could be its own thing. And you've got to select the moments that you're going to show her, that you're going to select the moments um, that you're going to show Phil and, and, the, and the things about him, especially there's a very specific moment in that final episode that hit me like a truck with his dad, you know? And then um, the slow burn of Brett's character. Have, have there been moments where you've overwritten things and, and, and it's killed you? You'd have to go, we have to remove this scene. We just have to pick these moments. It's like, it, it's it's just insane the amount of depth no. you have with these characters i mean bill i don't think we did we we i mean there's you know we we, we cut more jokes than the story yeah you, you know, know you know what like, wow. have... estimate to this this i mean it's something i've never done before and i think it's a product of how jason came in with this 
is you just named them all, but I could tell you, I'm not going to, but I could tell you every single character, as could Jason and and Brett and Brendan, because they're in the writer's room, which makes it not fair to the other actors and actresses. <laughs> but we could tell you every single character on here's beginning, middle, and end journey. And that was not how I started writing in TV. You know, to me, it was like, oh, you do um, 25 episodes of a show a year, and then you do your best to um, uh, drink and eat as much as you possibly can in the three months before you start doing it again. And you don't <laughs> worry about, you know, where anybody ends up. And to me as a writer, to sit in a place that not only do you know that you're going to get to do the beginning, middle and end of a story, but that even before you're, you know, halfway through the first year, you can say what each character, not just in the first season, what each character's beginning, middle and end is for the, the, the beginning, middle and end of this story frees you up to drop those little scenes in, like you said, Patton, you know, like, oh, shoot, you know, when we dropped in that Jason you know, dropped in that scene of uh, 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 Phil and his and his father, that's mm. setting up a story that we all know how it plays out, at least for us already, and are kind of excited about shooting it and writing it, even though, you know, that might not even come to its end until the third year, you know, and that's part of the fun of it. Well, that that's the other thing that was really yeah. fascinating, the way that first season ended, because by the, by the time we get to the last episode, you know you're in such good hands writing wise and you do this sneaky thing where it almost seems like everyone has reached a point of equilibrium in a weird way especially Roy and Keeley it's like I guess they're together now and they're going to be but you know that there's going to be hidden bumps and pitfalls that they don't even see coming so so in a weird way you created a reverse cliffhanger where you seem to have resolved a lot of people's stories but you're like but no something else is going to happen even with um <clears throat> jason and and hannah it's like okay well now they're on the same team but clearly something's going to happen or what is going to happen in this next season i you know i i, I know i'm not asking for spoilers but i'm just saying it's a really cool sensation to to end a season of a show where it actually seems to be resolved but you know it's not going to be and you don't know how they're going to keep flipping it around. It, it's amazing. I, I, I really like that. And I'm not taking any credit for it. Um, uh, at least not while all these people are on here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that makes more sense. Call you back. Hey, <laughs> when I want to do a one-on-one -on -one thing right after, I'll answer the rest of the question. But, uh, for me, what's really cool is I know as a writer that what you just talked about, Pat, it, it feels so rich and fun to me is that we're just at the start of some people's stories. You know what I mean? And on some shows, an easy example, uh, on some shows, Nate the Great, you know, him getting promoted to coach oh. is the end of his story. You know, on a show like this, it might end up being the start of his story. Do you know what I mean? And because um, it puts him in a whole, you know, uh, same, you look at, at the character of Keeley, you know, as I, I don't think it's rich enough just to go, oh, she's wrestling with who she was at the beginning. <laughs> And talking about who she'd become, we haven't seen it yet, who could she, she could become. So to me, that's part of the fun of this. Even as a fan, I found myself, you know, all right, my, my youngest son loves his show. It's maddening because he was, uh, uh, from what I can understand, Spin City was not for him. Um, <laughs> 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 love little, Richard Kind. Yeah. Love Richard Kind. Who, do, who doesn't love Richard Kind? Who doesn't love it? Yeah, but this is the Richard, first one. Richard Kind. The answer to that is Richard Kind. Richard Kind. And that's what's so sad. That. So sad. This is the first show that he watched on his own, and I know in my heart what he would have watched, whether I was involved in it or not. And uh, he uh, really responded to as a young man Jason's, you know, portrayal of the panic <clears throat> that that episode. And, oh man. And, and I, you, you get impressed with your own kids when they say something astute that is wise for their years. But at the end of that, he said, he just isn't all better, is he? Because that seemed pretty, pretty serious. And mm -hmm. that he, as a young viewer, realized that, and I will, you know, and, 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 and realized that that story, you know, <clears throat> the way that story ended there, you know, makes me not feel like I'm doing a spoiler when I say, you know, a guy that's dealing with that, that doesn't miraculously, we would be inauthentic if he had mir was miraculously cured yeah. because mm -hmm. of an episode, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Well, now the, the other thing too is, especially during the off season when you guys are clearly breaking episodes, did you, and this is more for the actors, for, for Juno, for Hannah, for um, you know Nick and everyone, um, did you have a chance to sit and talk with the writers and bounce ideas around or were you more excited to be surprised as to where they took you? Because just in season one, both of you, you guys' characters go in such surprising directions. Did you, did you have any say in this next season or? Absolutely not. I'm flying oh. <laughs> my pants. I'm really excited so about glad it. you said that so I mean, succinctly, I not me. And, and, but I think yeah. in a weird way, like there's, it's also something I'm so not used to. You know, I'm so used to having a full script for a tiny movie that no one's going to see that I have extortionate <laughs> notes on for days. <laughs> and like, then I let out some demons and then on to the next, you know? And like, this is... Uh, quite an extraordinary experience when we had this amazing time shooting season one, which I did have a bit of insight into what Keely was gonna go through because Jason uh, met with me and talked to me about the show and then unbelievably cast me. I still can't go over that. But I um, uh, then there was, you know, this year of complete, I, I don't know, devastation. And, and I mean, just like the world was weeping really. And the show came out and was such an uplifting thing to oh, watch. And then yes. remember filming it and feeling so honored to be a part of something that made you feel good, but not in a way where you're like, oh, I'm really, you know, watching myself on a TV. You're like, I am so invested in all these stories and they're so human and they're so um, enriching. And they're kind of showing an example of like how to live your life in the moment and accept it and enjoy it. And what a great lesson to, to kind of be kind of saying, I thought was extraordinary. And then to get to come back and do a new season and replay these characters while it's still going on. I was, I, I, I really feel deeply lucky to be playing Keely right now. She's such an injection of light for me. And I find it very liberating <coughs> that I don't know where she's going. You know, I think it feels a bit like living a double life because I don't know what Juno is going to do tomorrow. It's Saturday, <laughs> gee, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I feel I feel very safe in the hands that are writing her kind of destiny. Um, yeah. Wow. Now, safe Hannah, than I ever have, probably. <laughs> Hannah, you got to play a character that very much in the first episode, you kind of write her off as, oh, this will be the villain, this will be, but then she ends up going through, in my opinion, as much of a precarious growth arc that it has Ted in a weird way. She's really kind of out yeah. there on the wire a lot of times. So. What, how, what was that like? And, and again, I don't want any spoilers for season two, but do you have that same feelings of Juno of like, I actually don't want to know. I want to have that. It's a surprise to me. Well, bear in mind, I didn't know. I did not know her arc through season really? one. At all. Um, and Jason will tell you that I would check in with him and say, you know, is, is this, I'm getting the vibe that she's kind of pouring her heart out and it's been smashed on the floor, but I, I feel like I'm beating a completely different drum to everybody else. Is that, is that the plan? I mean, that, that's how clueless I was about where we were going with it. And when he just went, literally, it was like literally in the middle of the, in the, middle of the scene, he was like, oh yeah, 100%. And carried on talking, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So when when somebody says it with such confidence, I mean, I'm not going to lie. A part of me died in that moment because I was like, "And that's all I'm getting." <laughs> but when somebody says it with that conviction, you just go, "Okay." One, I know I'm in immensely safe hands. Two, I'm now excited to see where this is going. And three, the biggest thing for me leaving season one on, I feel like one beautiful stiletto, like <laughs> <laughs> waiting for season two to start, uh -huh. was that during season one, and I know the others will vouch for me on this one, I want to kind of thank these guys that put us together for putting together what is one of the most significant things in my life and certainly the most significant thing in my career this group of players and I feel like we're all like almost like theatrical players we're a little company I, mm. I yeah I I had no idea that I needed off screen this collection of people in different ways so it bring something to viewers that they didn't know they needed but I think as individuals it's brought something to us all 
off camera as well. Uh, Nick and Jeremy, I loved how the show takes again, much like with with uh, Hannah and Juno, where you okay, that's that's who these characters are. You know, we've seen these characters a million times. They're just going to be kind of like in the background, speaking up a little bit, and then they have arcs. And that that scene um, in in the office when you're when you're giving advice to Jason's character and Jeremy, you literally are, start giving advice like, "Oh, I actually have something to say," and and you're kind of putting. <laughs> The coach is like, you actually need to listen to me about this. I know what I'm talking. It's it's such an it's such an extraordinary scene. And then you, you both have moments where it's like it looks like your characters are stepping off a cliff. Like, oh, I can actually do this. Oh my god! So talk about that a little better. You know that those those arcs, those performances were incredible. Uh, yes, um, I well, Ted is a great enabler. Can I just say that between the series pattern, I I am. Um, I suggested uh, Higgins family on Mars, but I didn't hear anything back at all. Wow. And I'm just, just getting over we that. Didn't get that. We didn't we, get that. We, <laughs> we didn't get that. We didn't get it. We didn't, we, yeah, we never got that. Like, just, we just, season, season three. just from when you we said that, I sold it already, Jeremy. I sold that. Right. <laughs> oh. To Quibi. You yeah. sold it to Quibi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> season four. <laughs> By the, way, by the way, before Jeremy, do you guys torture Brendan and uh, Brett on set because you know that they're in our writer's room and they actually have the answers, or do you leave them alone? I'm fascinated. No, totally. Oh. Little nudges all the time from me, most definitely. Nice. I'll I try to only give a little breadcrumb here and there, but like, they, never get, <laughs> yeah. they never get the whole slice of bread. They don't right. get but you're kind about it. I assume <laughs> that Brett lords it over everybody as, as he does yeah, as his it. way. Yeah, I use it as a uh, as collateral, cool. and you know, if any, if anyone wrongs me, I say, "Do you want lines next week?" Stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, nice! It's a, it's a nice little nice little roll you got there. Dude. If you didn't have any lines next week, yeah. 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 Er erasing stuff on your iPad. This was your monologue. Be a shame. Be a shame. Got a little black book. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I interrupted you, Jeremy. That's fine. I was yeah, yeah. curious, though. Um, yeah. And then, and then so, Nick. I mean, obviously, again, yeah. we were talking about earlier, but. And just like that. And just like that, Jeremy, he, 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 he got oh, lost. Sam, so I, took, I took Jeremy's stuff. <laughs> By the way, just so you know, <laughs> you've tapped into something. It's never good for the show when Jeremy goes off on his tangents. They usually end up somewhere yeah. scary. We all take turns <laughs> stepping in, and then we just hear it away. <laughs> Jer Jer Jeremy, I love, I love that you risked it all with, like, the Higgins on Mars yeah. thing. <laughs> Sorry, man, go on. You just rolled the dice. <laughs> um, but I mean, like again, that uh, unless the show would have well, Nick's story is done. But on a show like this, you're like, well, wait a minute. Clearly, Nate has got something else is about to happen to him. You know, good and bad. We just don't know. Like, is that what's that like to the anticipation? What does that feel like? It's it's kind of um. It, it, it's kind of exhilarating. I, I absolutely echo what um, Hannah and Juno said in that the, there is so much trust in, in the writing that you, you, you know, and I, I would say I fell somewhere in between in that I had li little bits of information right from the start. Actually, I remember, I think Jason said maybe at the first read through um, sort of what the, the kind of the series one, two, three arc would be of, of, of Nathan. And um, Oh, did he now? I, no, I only got in information about season one, really. I, 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 in very, oh, that's strange. Um, I, in very broad brush strokes, but, um, and, and I guess it just became about. Oh, you got a brush. Yeah, the, the, only part, <laughs> the only part Nick forgot was to not say anything in front of Hannah, as we were very clear. Oh, okay. And this is yeah. what happens, Nick. One. <laughs> no, man, I, I heard in the read-through read about Higgins going to Mars. I think you said, Jason, <laughs> right? That's what you said in the read-through? Yeah. Sorry, I just, I just woke up. What, what was everyone saying? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Um, now, no, I've said um, it. Sorry, Nick. Uh, this, is a, th this next question um, is for... Uh, uh, Brett and Phil, and also, you know, Jason and the writers, with, with your characters, <clears throat> with Roy and Jamie, you really, 
kind of take apart um, wounded masculinity, toxic masculinity, masculinity in general, and how it um, can both help and hurt people, I guess. And, you know, Ted sort of is the elevated version of what they could both be. It's almost like one embraces his teachings and one doesn't. And it's um, how, just talk about that, the, the writing process of that and the acting process of that. Because Jamie, you you really commit to him being kind of unredeemable until the last moment. And then you your whole view of him gets shifted in that mm. final episode. So, you know, what was it like to, to kind of map all that out? Um, <clears throat> mm, uh, well, I think that everyone thinks that they're the good guy in the story, right? Like everybody sort of believes yeah. that they're the, mm. the hero. I think, and I think that within his own seemingly sort of twisted way, Jamie was fulfilling his rise, you know? Um, mm. And I think that, you know, Jason said something really interesting to me actually last week, um, and I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna get this all wrong, but somewhere in the in the realm of what you choose, what your intention as an actor is, and what the audience will feel, are gonna be may well be different things. And it's not, and and I sort of felt from that it's not really up to me what the audience are gonna feel. I can only sort of you know play the story that's going through my head with that. And so when it came to Jamie's arc, I had to just go from my from an actor's perspective i had to go i like this guy i know exactly why it is that he's doing these things that he's doing he's doing it because the environment that he's been in because of you know the fact that he was probably like five when he was found as a footballer or, or you know very young when he was found yeah. as a footballer as a lot of footballers are um and you know he's been totally special and so of course he's gonna act that way and and i needed to do everything that i could to just <coughs> do you know what to sort of play what's in front of me and you know, in, in, in a similar way, and again, somewhere in between the two of knowing, <laughs> going around, hey, guess what, Hannah? I knew exactly what was going on the whole time. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> no, no, oh no, no. I, but in a similar way, it was, an, it was, it was almost like <laughs> there was enough to, to draw the lines and make the picture. And then as we went along, it was like, okay, and you can paint this bit here and you can paint this bit here. And for me, it meant that um, I could only play what was right in front of me at that point. And it meant that I wasn't, you know, they, they always say, don't play the end of the scene. In this, it was like, I couldn't play the end of the help because I couldn't play the end of the series. Um, and so it was really, it was reacting on sort of what was in front of me, I think, from an actor's perspective. So that was, yeah. Well, I mean, Brett, you, Did, Roy. Brett, Patton, can I say, can I say something really quick? Just in regards no. to, to okay. the field. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who, are you? Who are you, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, like, like I, I have to, I, I mean, I got to give big props to the way Phil and the way, you know, Anthony had play, you know, son, son of the guns, because yeah. like it, like, like to play them without judgment, to play them with reckless abandon, to play them with, mm. as, as Phil put, like, you know, you know, like Ken Kesey says, you know, the, 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 the leads of their own movie, you know, in the electric Kool-Aid mm. acid test, you know, <laughs> it, like I remember seeing like Olivia had like two films at Toronto Film Festival and I got to run around and watch a bunch of movies and one of them was 12, 12 Years a Slave mm -hmm. and to see Michael Fassbender and Alexander Mc... no like not Alexander Steve McQueen mm -hmm. yeah, sorry not Alexander McQueen uh but but uh, do a panel afterwards and to hear Michael Fassbender talk about his his reprehensible character and, but you can't play them on the right side of history you know, and with with when you play a historical, you know, drama or comedy, that for that matter, you know the shot, you know how it ends. With this, you don't. So you just have to like stay in in the thing, and you have to find like, you know, that he loved this woman. He he was talking about the love that he had for, uh, you know, the the, the character, the the woman that, uh, the, the the you know, the slave. You know, and it was like, and it was like, I had never it 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 unlocked this thing in me where I was like, yeah, assholes don't know they're assholes. They think they're the star of their own movie, as, as Phil mm -hmm. just said. They think they they think they're doing the right thing, like real, like you real. You have to aspect. empathize with them. Yeah, you have to empathize yeah. with them to play them. That's the most important thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And as yeah. a human, and, and it's one of the it's one of the neat things. I mean, I I mean, I joke. It sounds like a joke where it's like you know, you know, fund the arts. Don't give it all to the Sacklers, but I mean it because when you have that opportunity to empathize with someone that has a disgusting view of the human experience. And you play it with with 
like I said, reckless abandon, like like Phil did, like like you know, um, I mean, like Hannah was asked to do, you know, and yet be in the in the in the, in the tug of war of you know, mm-hmm. uh, ego versus soul, like and Anthony did, you know, and and to this very last moment on the show, like it's that's such a gift as as I'm, you know, I know Bill feels and we all felt in in the writers' room of like, oh, we're gonna write these people as pieces of shit, but will the people be willing? To not be likable within their thing, and to find people that that cli- the cliche is that all actors want to be loved and liked and lauded. To find people that were willing to love the sh- the shadow version of themselves yeah. for these characters, and is like is as big of a fucking gift as anybody in the writing staff or anybody holding a, a boomstick or anybody picking out props for us. Like it, it, it's it's uh it's I I, I applaud their you know bravery i applaud their uh um you know willingness to go there because it's 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 not why people want to be in showbiz they want to mm. be eddie murphy they want to be bugs bunny <laughs> they want to be paris bueller you know what i mean they want to be the oh yeah kid, i quite know? like playing nasty uh, shits i don't know why i haven't well, unpacked that yet you, you I, should. I mean me too you fucking I should. Should. <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> back to you're talking about you know brett mm. your, your character roy it's very it, it it's indicated pretty clearly that he has a very similar background to jamie and has just as much mm. of a right to be a, a horrible prick but is it because of age or wisdom he's he's re, he seems to be trying to reach for some humanity it's almost like what jamie could be if he doesn't completely goes spinning off into his own ego something happened and especially the fact that the link between you guys is keely that keely that scene with you and um between you and jamie when, when you're explaining how you can actually hook up with women without being a total douchebag is such an amazing scene and then later on the press conference scene between you and roy i mean what, what uh. do you, oh my god it was so but and you see Brett, you see you struggling to, uh, is she like, like you're not used to a one Cause you say, I just, I hooked up with a lot of women and that was it. And now here's a woman who's actually improving you as a man. And it's clear your character has never experienced this before. So what, what were those yeah. things like to write and to act? It was amazing. Well, I don't want to, like, I hate to sort of sound pretentious about like the process of how, how I do a character and stuff. But for me, from the beginning, when we wrote Jamie and Roy, it was like, for me, and I was really strict about this, Roy had to have a hairy chest and Jamie had to not. So for me, you said he had to be smooth. Dude, you're so said, looking no. forward so to deep. your pearl of wisdom. So deep. So for me, I'm sorry, guys. If this is like Ryan. I'm, I'm sorry, Brett. I'm first. sorry. The, Brett, the Paley people are telling me to cut your mic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. no, but for me, for me to get into the, the character, and when I met up with Jamie, I was like, you stay as you are and i'll go through puberty and then we can be on screen together and you'll be able to see the difference of the sort of masculinity oh uh, was a full moon look at them <laughs> the no, but the what was uh, the uh yeah look this the serious answer is one of the things me and jason talked about i don't know if we've ever said this in a panel because it's quite dark do you mind jason if we yeah, say go it? for it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know you're i know what you're gonna say yeah yeah go for it. Well, it was like a secret between us that basically Roy at the beginning of season one, like his pla- he knows he's probably got one season left, left in him health wise. And he had no plan. And he's, he's finishing his career in a mid table team surrounded by dickheads. And now this fucking clown's turned up. And his plan is basically when I can't play football anymore, I'm going to kill myself. He had no plan beyond this. Like it was, he's depressed. He's in deep, he's in a deep dark place at the beginning he he you know he was a footballer when he was five like jamie exactly. and he yeah. lived this life and he has his money and he's he's had lots of women but but like he said with keely it's all been kind of for shit <laughs> and he he was a legend seven years ago and now he's steadily declining there's nothing really great in his life except for phoebe and he has no he had he never had a plan beyond football it was like I play football. He would have said jokingly when he was 20, yeah, I'll play football. And when I can't, I'll kill myself. He would have said that jokingly. But I think by this point, he's now starting to think, I think I mean that. And and it's <laughs> Ted, the slow thing of Ted and what happens around him. And then Keeley is opening this 
thing that has been shut for a very long time now. Yeah. And so I guess it's the, you know, all the growls and the things is he doesn't have the vocabulary for it. He doesn't, he's not there yet. He's quite far from it, but this little chink is being, that's why I really like the fact that often he's just like, because it's, oh. he doesn't, he <laughs> can't. Scene- on the red carpet, there were moments I'm like, oh God, there's so many times I've wanted to do that. Just fuck off. <laughs> Just, the way you was so brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, but I every also housewife love... globally liked that as well. Oh, but just... <laughs> <laughs> But I also love the fact that they don't just have, it's not that Keely is a rescuer. She's not the manic pixie dream girl who's there Mm -hmm. to rescue Roy. That's Juno. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Similar, but quite different. (laughs) But she's there to help him, but he has to be open to her helping him. And a lot of times he stumbles and keeps pushing her away. And so in a weird way, it's up to you to get in touch with your rescuer and open up to them. It's not, it can't be all their job. And yeah. and Keely yes. all but says that, like, I'm trying my best here, but you have to also, you know, it's not just me doing this. I'm not doing all the heavy yeah. lifting here. And it was such a, again, it was, that was so, cause I just see so many movies where the woman is just the rescuer with no other arc, but I'm here to help this man and that's why I'm here. And for her to go, I'm I'll help you, but I've got like eight other things going on. And if you you've got like three more goes and then I gotta I gotta move. I gotta go do this other shit. I was like, this is so fucking awesome. So But I think that's such a truth that you can't save anybody. You can only love them. Do you yes. know what I mean? And then they have to save themselves. But you as a human, you need to be loved. If you hate yourself and you need saving being loved is what's going to make you feel like saving yourself you know it's kind of a weird catch-22 and Mm -hmm. i think the joy of keely with these gentlemen these exquisite creatures is that she just wants them to be honest and be Mm -hmm. able Mm -hmm. to be honest about who they are like correct me if i'm wrong jason or brendan (laughs) um but um you know i think that that's what she's asking for because she's so unjudgmental which is something I love so much about her mm-hmm. but she, I don't think she has time for people that are faking it or lying you know and um we see that also with her relationship with um Hannah which is a very special one as well oh, well I wanted to talk about that because then it also loops around to Hannah's character who has even though she is very much in power she is very much an alpha it she realizes that maybe I don't actually love myself and I need to you know and and so through stages when she's when when um when Juno when you're talking about the paparazzi photo like are you I would pay money to have this out what is wrong with you like like don't you realize how awesome you are and it kind of takes the arc of the season for her to and then the 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 talk she gives to Jason at the end of like oh no we're gonna she is now this different fully realized realizes how awesome she is mm, well I was struck but i didn't expect the when i did the first scenes um with juno Mm -hmm. i didn't expect for a second that the i i think i was damaged by watching too many things where women are pitted against each other yes and so i hadn't even entertained the idea of watching things like two friends calling unfortunate you know just in 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 general too often you know absolutely not just women by the way just in general but yeah no i'm sorry yeah but even when even when um even when uh sassy comes in as well there is i think there's part of the viewer that will be going oh how's this gonna work out with sassy and keely now because keely's got a bit of a you know ownership (laughs) of of, of rebecca yeah and then you see there's no attrition there either absolute love and acceptance straight Mm -hmm. away so that was that was quite an eye opener for me. I just thought, God, it, it, I wasn't expecting for a second that there would be all this um, beautiful harmony between between the women, which is a th- thrilling to play because you just think, oh, okay, these are actually really decent people who are mm-hmm. flawed and struggling, you know. I also mm-hmm. think, that, Pat, and all your questions dance around something in a good way too that I always want to mention because it's something that's really important to Jason mm-hmm. and me is you know. We one of the things that this show is really about is mentorship, you know, and uh, um, and all these things come under that thing of a real mentors don't. It's like what you said about Juno's character, Kiwi. They don't fix you. They show you a different path, and then you have to choose to do it on your own. At least that's what my mentors did. And when Jason and I first connected about this, 
you know, and, and how we both had huge mentors in our life. And even Jason, when we were interviewing writers and stuff for the show, we would ask them if they had ever had kind of a mentor that really kind of changed the direction of their course. Mm -hmm. And what's been so fascinating for me as a writer is to watch that even in this discussion weave its way through in Hannah's character being a mentor, you know, in, you know, in Rebecca being a mentor for Keely, you know, maybe being famous for being famous, maybe there's another option. Do you know oh. what I mean? And, and even Higgins being a mentor for uh, Ted when it comes to relationships and the scene that you spoke about. That was great, about yeah. how, it, how mm -hmm. it really, really works. And even in the episode with uh, Roy and Jamie, where Roy admits at that banquet, you know, and when Ted asks him, what were you like when you were 21? And he's like, I was a piece of shit prima donna. They were the same guy. And so that conversation, you know, with Roy mm -hmm. and Jamie at the end, is a mentory conversation. You know what I mean? It's, you know, this is this is the path. And to me, all of these things are under that umbrella in a way, you know, I'm so great, grateful to Jason to bring this stuff back into me because, you know, when you're a writer and you get to talk after the fact about something that you never intended in the first place. And so uh, Jason would talk to me a lot about mentorship. And I said, you know, what's weird is I was a bit of a screw up in high school in this one English teacher said, hey, instead of drinking beer and getting high during your free periods across the street, why don't you hang out with me and talk about writing because you can actually write dialogue. And his name was Bob Cox. I always mention him. I named Dr. Cox and Scrubs after him. And I'd never really thought about it till Jason brought it up as a topic. You know what I mean? And that has really weaved its way through this show in a way that I get, I would bet that every character in this show, every actor, could talk about their scene of mentorship either on the receiving end or the giving end with another character you know um even even jeremy does it with rebecca towards the end when he quits do you know what i mean and and kind of lays it out there for her of who she used to be and what it meant you know and even so, sassy does in yes. one episode sassy does to rebecca yeah and so that's right he, yeah. so it's, it's a cool theme that i think uh, i you know it gets overlooked because I wasn't even aware of it until Jason informed me that that's what we were doing. And now I'm doing everything <laughs> I can. <laughs> can you see there's a theme here, Pat? <laughs> I see that there's a theme. Well, I'm getting to the last question here, but I do want to point out that earlier today, um, Sarah Silverman tweeted out, be Ted Lasso, um, mm -hmm. which is yet another indication. Someone else has watched the show and, I just, this is one of those shows, but I tell my friends to watch it. I know that. And yes, that's a very sweet thing to tweet out, but, and, and I hope this doesn't <laughs> sound too cheesy. In these last few months, there have been moments when I'm like, wait a minute, what would Ted Lasso do? How can I be Ted Lasso in this situation? In this situation where I'm either down on myself or I'm angry at someone else. I know that's a very, I'm putting way too much weight on this, on this very funny, very heartfelt show, but um, it's also a design for living. I'm sorry, guys. You actually did a design for living. And there's a question actually from uh, one of the sponsors, Citibank, was saying things are so unsure right now. We are still so up in the air. How do you tap into this superhuman Ted Lasso optimism when you need it? Like, what are ways that you individually do that? That is an excellent question, though. How do you, because there are moments when I tap into that how would Ted handle this situation? I am- um, Brendan, uh, Brendan, you want to start so we can hear your fucking voice? <laughs> well, and I'm sorry if I haven't- uh, yeah, Never mind, never mind. Uh, Phil, <laughs> you go. Phil, you no, go. Well, I'm, right, no. <laughs> I'm just dealing with something over here and um, I reek of shrimp. I still reek of shrimp. Um, <laughs> when close plays to win, what have I done? What have I done? Um, no, I think to the to that you know the only thing I kind of try to do is like keep in mind now you know not just what you're going through as an individual and all this stuff, but that everyone you meet is going through what you're going through um, in this time of pandemic. So if everyone's a little bit shitty um, or a little bit not their best, just you know kind of Ted style, you know try to just assume that there's just something going on with them right now, and uh, and you're just not seeing the best of them, but they're not necessarily always like this. Everyone's just kind of going through stuff and it's not just not just yourself wow and also don't be afraid to ask how somebody is genuinely you know if you if you i think that's really important to like be interested in what's going on with people as well as being interesting yourself you know i think that's a really important thing at the moment wow. yeah don't don't be afraid to, to ask them but also don't be afraid to listen to them when, when they tell you because someone will most people will say i'm fine but like listen uh, to that how right. many eyes 
we're in that. I'm fine. Like, oh, that's three eyes. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. <laughs> like, you know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll you comment guys, on everyone else's. Go ahead. Yeah. I think I give the impression that I'm not that self-involved. At least I hope I do, right? <laughs> really? yeah. Yeah. One of the things, that I'll, I mean, this is my rare sincere moment, is because I, I said it to Jason once, I said it to my boys, and this is how the show has made me think, is I had reached the point that if I met Ted Lasso in real life, um, I guarantee you my head would go, oh, it's going to be funny a week from now when this dude pulls his mask off and reveals himself to be an asshole like everyone else. And mm. then he, what was so fascinating, I try to do it now, is I know that as a human being, if a week later he proved to be the sincere, open, optimistic, hopeful, and forgiving person that he represents himself as, then you have to look inward and go, what is going on that that's how I view this stuff now? And it really was a, yeah. an actual issue in my own life. I mean, it could be a product of where we are with quarantine, everybody saying stuff might be, have something to do with Hollywood, who knows, right? <laughs> uh, but but um, um, I think it's a valuable tool that if you turned into this thing uh, and looked at Ted and went, when's the other shoe going to drop? Do you know what I mean? Or you made the judgment on Rebecca of saying, ah, uh, oh, she's that classic, just, you know, evil villainous bitch with no reason or rhyme behind it. You know, um, those are the judgments that we're all making nowadays. I see my kids making them on social media. And I'm, and to me, mm. back out of that and put the, the spotlight back on yourself has been I mean, I don't want to be too sincere, but hugely valuable for me personally. It's helped me like Brett more. I know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That's a hard thing. We all need help there. Right. You know, it doesn't happen organically. Yeah, yeah. No, no it doesn't. No. Doesn't make it Harry easy. Harry Chest is intimidating. I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> well, this Every was... day, Jason. All right. This was a fascinating, but for me, very limited conversation. There were so many other questions I want to ask and talk about. I'll probably just text Jason and Brett later and and DM Hannah and bother everybody because um, season two is coming up. Thank you guys so, so much for creating, I I think, the best TV show last year. (laughs) Flat out, flat out, most miraculous, original TV show I've seen in a long, long time. And thank you. Paley Fest for letting these discussions happen. Thank you, City, the official card of the Paley Fest, and Verizon, the sponsor. If you want to know more, go to paleyfest.org. There's all kinds of other talks and programs coming up. Thank you, cast and creators of Ted Lasso. I cannot wait for season two. Thanks, Thank guys. you for championing Thanks, the hell out of it. Thank you, yeah, Pat. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. 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 Thank